Welcome to Prototype to Production, where we go from notebook code to a deployed model in the cloud. I'm Nikita, and I'm going to show you all the foundational concepts you'll need in order to build, train, scale, and deploy machine learning models on Google Cloud. We'll cover the basics and also dive into more advanced topics like hyperparameter tuning, distributed training, and experiment tracking. We'll use an image classification model as our main example for this entire series, but many of the concepts covered are still very applicable to other data and model types. In this episode, we'll start by talking about the benefits of running machine learning in a cloud environment. Then we'll look at how to use notebooks on Google Cloud. If you're anything like me, your machine learning journey probably starts in a notebook. Maybe you're running Jupyter in a local environment, or maybe you're using Colab or a Kaggle kernel. But while experimentation in notebooks is great, it's easy to hit a wall when it comes time to scale those experiments. Suddenly, your concerns are far more than just getting the highest accuracy score. What if you have a long-running job, want to do distributed training, host a model for online predictions, or maybe your use case requires more granular permissions around security and data privacy? What's your data gonna look like at serving time, and how will you monitor the performance of your model over time? For all of that, we turn to the cloud. Let's jump in and see how all of this works. Step one is to set up our environment. We'll use Vertex AI, which is Google Cloud's managed machine learning platform. From the Vertex AI section of the Cloud Console, select Workbench. Vertex AI Workbench is the place to go in Google Cloud if you want to work in a notebook. So if you're already using notebooks, this environment will feel familiar. Under Manage Notebooks, select New Notebook, give the notebook a name, and under Permissions, we'll run our notebook as a service account. Then under Advanced Settings, you can customize your notebook by providing your own Docker image, changing the hardware profile, and adding GPUs. Workbench notebooks also shut down automatically after a period of inactivity, so you won't incur additional charges when you aren't using the instance. To enable terminal access, just select this box at the bottom. And once our notebook is ready, we'll see this Open Jupyter Lab button turn blue. The launcher shows the different options you have when creating notebooks. Workbench provides multi-kernel support, so you can create notebooks for TensorFlow, R, PyTorch, a custom environment, etc., all within the same instance. And when I say kernel, I just mean the managed environment where your notebook runs. They come pre-installed with common data science libraries, but you can also pip install additional libraries that aren't included by default. If I click on the TensorFlow 2 kernel, this will open up a notebook that comes pre-installed with TensorFlow, as well as other libraries that are useful for data science. Workbench managed notebooks also come with Git integration, so you can make use of version control and even sync your notebook's Git repo with the remote GitHub URL. You can change the hardware profile of your instance and add GPUs, so this means you can test your code on a smaller and cheaper machine and then modify the hardware when you want to run a longer experiment or boost the training performance. This sets up our deep learning environment where we can explore data, train models, and interact with other Google Cloud services. But more on all of that later. In this episode, we took the first step in getting from prototyping machine learning in a local environment to production machine learning in the cloud. We learned about Vertex AI Workbench, which is the place to go in Google Cloud if you want to use a notebook. If you're interested in running your own Workbench notebooks or testing this out for yourself, click on the tutorials linked in the description. In the next episode, we'll learn about storing data in Google Cloud for machine learning. Don't forget to like, subscribe for more great content, and I'll see you next time.